Thank you, Brooke. Uh, yes, hello good, hello, good morning. My name is Hannes Mühleisen, and I'm here today to talk to you about DuckDB. But I'd like to start with a small story. This is my actual car license plate from my first car 20 years ago. <laughs> and what you can probably tell from this is that I may have been a database nerd back then already. Um, I, in fact, I love these things so much that I went on and do research, and this is where I met Mark Grasfeld, who is here today. And we were starting to think about new ways of building database systems. And we were doing that in Amsterdam at the CWI, which probably you have not heard of, but it is the Dutch National Research Lab for Mathematics and Computer Science. And it's the place where Python was invented by Guido van Rossum all those years ago. So it is, had, had a certain impact on the world. But while we were there, we started feeling that there was something wrong with the world of data. And I should explain it's a movie from the 90s. Um, in this movie, this character tells another character that he knew there was always something wrong with the world, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. And we had the same feelings, that there was something sort of off with how people were doing stuff with data, and that we should probably do something about it. And one thing we noticed after you know, many years of thinking about that is that what was happening is that were people using very big iron systems like Hadoop to solve fairly small data problems. You know, stuff that's a bit too big for Excel or Pandas or something like that. And by using some big iron for something small, like here this uh, sledgehammer to crack a nut, apparently that's an expression, you just get bad ergonomics. Uh, in German, we have a saying um, to shoot at sparrows with cannons. And in fact, there was a development that has sort of supported this, where we now have data lake formats uh, built on things like Parquet that actually have the ability of turning a huge data set, a very unwieldy thing, into something much more manageable. And we can, with formats like Parquet, we can actually um, very precisely uh, fetch only data that is relevant to a specific query. What also has happened is that we got a disconnect between storage and compute. And I know you know this, and people have talked about this before, but I feel it's the difference between you know, knowing that something is happening and you know, appreciating all the possible consequences of it. And one of the consequences that these things are disconnected is that we can scale down compute to the appropriate size that's you know, su sufficient for the problem. And you would be really, really, really surprised how small you can scale down data problems. Um, in fact, the laptop in front of you is more powerful than you think. So if the data is small enough, you know, there's no reason not to put it on your laptop. Another thing that we've noticed while thinking about you know, having the splinter in our man minds about data systems was that the community was spending a lot of time thinking about the meat of the hamburger, the patty, apparently it's called. Um, and this was great. You, know, you can write a lot of interesting research papers about things like join algorithms and things like that. But the problem is you're not looking at the whole hamburger, right? You're ignoring the end-to-end -end user experience. And that was such a problem that people had like aversion towards data systems because they were hard to handle. And so we decided we were going to work on making an end-to-end -end good experience for data systems for once. So the result of all that thinking and sort of uh, like long 10-year process almost was that a whole new class of data systems was required. And the first instance of that class is DuckDB. So DuckDB is an in-process analytical data management system. It does SQL, and um, I will tell you more about it in a moment. But first, the first question we always get is, why is it called DuckDB? It is because I used to have a duck. Uh, his name was Wilbur. He is a very cute duck. Um, DuckDB is very um, flexible. It runs really anywhere. It can run from a Raspberry Pi to a huge server. It has a very small footprint, only 20 megabytes. And it has no dependencies. It's like a, just a C++ project, and that's it. DuckDB is very feature-rich. We speak a wide, we have a, a very large sort of SQL dialect where we have a, all the features that you would expect from a normal, from a modern analytical SQL engine. It has integrations with Python, um, a lot of other languages, arrow integration, and can, for example, directly read Parquet files. DuckDB is fast. We have a state-of-the-art 
vectorized so-called query processing engine. And that comes directly from the um, sort of state-of-the-art research that we did at the research group in Amsterdam. For example, DuckDB can also automatically paralyze queries. So you give it a query, and it will figure out how to use all your hardware resources. DuckDB is free. It's free as in free beer. It's MIT licensed. Do whatever you want. Build a company on top of it. It's really up to you. But let me zoom in a bit into some things that make DuckDB different. DuckDB is not a client-server system. And in, I know that is also something where it's a bit of a departure from what people are used to. All data systems under the sun are client-server. Um, and this has been unquestioned since 1984. But DuckDB is in process, meaning the database runs directly in the application. And that means you can directly access data in the application. And in fact, I'm going to show you a quick demo on why this is amazing. Here I have a Python script where I create a data frame with a billion rows. It's about 8 gigabytes in memory. And now I can spin up a DuckDB instance in that same Python shell because it's in process. And I can run a query, and it will only take 160 milliseconds or so to go through these billion rows and compute the average. Um, and that has to do with, yes, the, data is, the database has a state-of-the-art engine, but it also can directly access the data in your uh, memory of the Python process. But let's zoom out a little bit. How does DuckDB fit in a typical architecture? We have our data lake, we have our analysis cluster, and we have the laptop with the analyst. Well, very often the first step is that we do ETL. We take the big unwieldy data set, and we transform it into a bit more manageable data in like data lake formats or parquet. But meanwhile, the analyst sits idle. And then we do the analysis project where we do explore and we try to find out something about the data. And we use the cluster as well. And this works really well, but it creates contention with other jobs running on the cluster, and it slows down analysis. With DuckDB, you can actually move the exploration and analysis on the very laptop that the user sits in front of. And it has one real advantage, is there's no contention. You have your own laptop. Um, it reduces latency and just generally reduces load on the cluster. Everyone's happy. Let me show you another dem demo here. Here I'm now taking the, DuckDB, uh, the, the famous New York taxi data set. It's about, it's about 90 gigabytes of data. It's in parquet format. And it's about 1.7 billion rows across 50 columns. And I'm just using DuckDB in this shell here to you know, set up the, um, the view with the trips. And now I can run, for example, a very, very basic query where I uh, group the number of, uh, where I count the number of trips per cap type. And this query has to look at all this data in this, uh, in this huge data set. And it don't f finishes in under three second, seconds on my two-year-old MacBook. So that is really something that you wouldn't have thought that you can run these huge data sets on a normal MacBook, right? You can also have a much more complicated query. For example, in this query, we compute the number of trips per um, amount of passengers, the year in which they happen, and the distance. So this is a bit more complicated. And I'm not going to expect you to read the SQL query. But even this more complicated query will finish within uh, under 10 seconds. But how does DuckDB fit into the machine learning space? Well, we are not doing machine learning. We are database people. We are simple-minded. Um, but as you probably know, the process of preparing data for analysis is the, one of the things that you spend most of your time on if you want to do any sort of ML problem. And DuckDB actually fits really great into that process, because I mentioned you can pull a parquet file. Um, you can do a lot of reshaping, wrangling, you know, figuring out what features are required, creating new features, all that. You can do all that in DuckDB. And then we have integrations with systems like PyTorch or TensorFlow to directly ship the results of this reshaping you're doing to these libraries. And the cool thing is that because DuckDB runs in process, we are already in the same environment that the ML library is also going to run in, which means the transfer is near instantaneous. So now I hope I have given you some reason to check out DuckDB. Um, here are some pointers, but with that, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>